road paid for them. The four companies that we had, and I contacted each and every one of them to make sure that they would agree to the term and that they qualified to the term for uh, Bill Fellows, Clay Felt, John Foster, Rear Mike, Marcella Layhock, Pat Brown, Pop Ted Barber, and Keller Williams, who became her. Uh, and again, I'm going to point that out. If that capital letter, the real realtor meets all the criteria, but he will not include it, he either accidentally omitted, we're going to add him on and include them on the next rotation. This is taking some of the other items that y'all told us you wanted to see, and that's how we picked up the four names. Any questions? Anyone agree, disagree? You want to add different criteria? Sounds pretty fair to me. If y'all are agreeable to that, I'd like to you consider making a motion that we accept those uh, conditions and terms and that we will make the drawing right here to select the realtors. And what we're going to do, there are two properties. We had a beer warehouse. Uh, we went back, uh, Ram and I, and they had no files on the beer warehouse purchase here. So we were able to reconstruct that file here by going to Title Express where the clothing was and get that. There's no survey. They purchased that property without a survey. So we're going to need to consider doing a survey when we get to that point after the analysis and all to do it. On the, the two acres with the house out in Rocco Grande Business Park, Ram went back through that one. And in that contract uh, to Watkins Tank, Jesse committed to allow them to rent that property during construction of their property. So at this time, we can't slip that to sale unless during round meeting he's going to visit with him and hopefully he will allow us to terminate that uh, lease. So we have to, we can go ahead and draw for it and if we can get through that point, we'll try to lease it. But this is something that they did. Hopefully they'll agree to go ahead and put up a, a construction trailer on that side, release us from that lease. So we can go ahead and market it and try to sell it. So that I bring him, you're going to see later on, we need to try to get all the funds we can in here. Are they paying for the lease? No. No? I don't think that, it didn't even talk about any term of the lease. It did, that they'll be able to use it during the construction period. Is there a time frame? No. no. So that's, they can lock that up for, well, and, the reality is, what's the condition of the house itself? I mean, to me, they'd be better off in a portable. They spent quite a bit of money, money out there sure. remodeling that house and all previously. So, it, and they put in new septic systems yeah. and things like that. So, it's really not. It's not for a construction trailer, it's probably the worst time. So, that's the, what we're going to be drawing is the committee goes ahead and vote. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, work selection of real estate agent for listing FEDC property. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second my motion. Uh, we have a second by David Strozier to accept the listing agent selection process that's been outlined on this and the four real estate companies that we're going to draw for will be John Foster, Marcella Lahoff, Ted Barber, and Danny Curry. I have taken the liberty to make four exact square cut pieces of paper with each one of those on there one time. We're going to drop it in this paper and shake it up and off. Now then, do we have any further discussion on that item? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. The motion passed. So we're going to just do this. And we're going to allow the Honorable City Councilman John Durrell to make it, to draw. <laughs> the first property he's drawing for is the beer warehouse. I just fold it up for this. The beer warehouse 
go to Dan Kirby. Now, the next one is going to be uh, for the business part, Rancho Grande business part, and this is going to be continued upon us being able to get a relief. One more time, Honorable Councilman. tried to do this as fairly we could in open record so hopefully that will do it. So the next one we're going to do is you're going to draw one more out of this and this will be for future rotation. If we list the future product, it's going to be Marcello Lehoff to be on the left. And the fourth one, if we do, is John Foster. So what we'll be doing is contacting them and start getting them to help do some marketing analysis. Uh, we may need to look and talk to them about doing surveys, come back in here next time and go from there. So we'll go from there. Any other questions before we move on? On the beer warehouse property, that will be sold as a unit, the whole yeah. thing, right? Not, not breaking it up into one warehouse and the other warehouse, yeah. right? I really don't know how many improvements are located on the property, to be honest with you. Okay, we're going to go into item C, discussion into entering into an interlocal agreement with the city of Florida regarding the city providing the FEDT accounting services. Mr. Tower. Okay, um, let's see, what do I do with mine? Anyway, well, this is the result of conversations that I've had previously with Laura Fagans, the uh, comptroller for the city of Floresville. And uh, this is a practice that um, many cities do with their economic development um, groups, is have them do some of the county work with the entity. And so uh, what I did is uh, met with Andy and Laura one day, and we talked about the possibility of making this happen. Uh, it's, of course, up to the the board, and then uh, if we do approve this agreement, then it would have to go before the city council uh, for their approval. Uh, just so you know, uh, this is a document that I had from Seguin that we simply just changed the wording in, and uh, then um, the city had Lou Rosenberg review it. He added a few things and made a few comments, of which Andy, myself, and Laura didn't object to. And so uh, I'll give you a moment to read through, but just simply outlines the duties, you know, range uh, uh, for reporting format to include uh, budget, uh, current budget, current period. That's just the standard reporting columns that will be uh, in our budget. So in other words, the budget that the city council sees will have all those similar reporting columns so that we can compare always current month to budget month and to year to date, et cetera, et cetera. Issue checks that are approved by uh, the treasurer and you know, executive director or interim executive director, president or vice president. Uh, all checks, of course, accompanied by an invoice. Uh, so really what we're doing is we're instructing them what is to be paid. It's on our bank accounts. The FEDC remains the signatories on all uh, the accounts. So no, the city would not have signature authority on any of those accounts. We're just simply, you know, a paperwork administrative uh, process. Uh, therefore, the data entry would be done at that level. Uh, the bank accounts would be reconciled after we provide those accounts to them to do the reconciliation. Um, this is one thing that uh, Mr. Rosenberg had added in here within three days of receipt by the FEDC we would provide them. They wanted to have some sort of timeline that we give them the... Uh, Got another tape? Yes, I do. And several copies. Here we go. Okay. Yes. within three 
three days of us receiving them. In other words, so that we don't wait 20 days from the time that the end of the month occurs. He just put the number of days that we don't allow, which is not a really good deal. Uh, city controller shall be available in person by phone email to assist with, assist with questions pertaining to the accounting or FDBC. And we put a, a dollar amount there, 350 a month. Now, Catherine no longer could be appointed. Yes, if we go through this process. And she's been told that this is a consideration we have. Um, we know that until we make the full transition, there might be some work that still needs to be done. But um, I feel good about having the, the financials broken out. Now it'd be much easier when we say, here, this is what we need entered. It's going to be a whole lot easier to do that. Well, it make it easier in the long run, too, when we do the city audit? Um, well, my understanding, if they are handling the accounting part of this, uh, then they would incorporate any audits with their one audit, and we might even save some dollars that there. That makes sense to me. Not only do the uh, time consuming, because Jason put an inordinate amount right. of time doing that, I'm going to standardize it for the city council, citizens, uh, record retention. There's just a whole lot of reasons for this. To do it. Not just because somebody else is doing it. It's just it's good for us. The cost is very favorable to us. Uh, some of you may be asking you here that 4A is not doing it. I'm going to tell you by regulations and all. We this is specifically found in the example. We have to reimburse the city for this, so they can't do it for free. So that. Uh, Mr. Talley calculated the hours that he, he thought it'd take him to work it for months, and that's how it came This was it. based on um, what Laura gets paid per hour and then what an assistant gets paid per hour, and about how many hours would each one spend, uh, less for Laura, of course, more for the assistant, but that's kind of what we came up with. Is that less than what we think happened? Well, uh, this month it would be, you know, so when you look at the total, uh, it's probably going to be about a wash. It's very reasonable. But I think it's that it's going to be consistent. That's what the neat thing is. It's going to be consistent and then if, and then transparency. If the city council wants a report, they can request a report and the comptroller prints it and has it at their city council meeting. Standardized. Uh, they stay up to date on their software with their program, have better backup. On and on and on. What do we have to do to uh, get them? <coughs> well, we would have to approve our portion. This right. is what he had to approve okay. back. Yeah. Yeah. Approve our portion. Then uh, my understanding is that they would um, try to get that on the agenda for June 27th with the city mm -hmm. and, and um, let them review that and, and see if they're wanting to approve that. And then if it gets approved, then we could probably move forward with them. One thing that doesn't have in there at all is, I know some of the city council was concerned about the separation between city and FEDC. They are not going to be involved with budgeting numbers. They're not going to be involved in preparation. So they're basically just doing our kind of work. They're like an accountant. That's right. So now she's available to talk to right. you, but, right. you know. They can't dip their fingers into our that's amazing. Any other questions? Thank you again, Mr. Talley, for working on this. Do you have anybody like to make a motion on this and further discussion? I move to approve the interlocal agreement for accounting services between the City of Floresville and the Floresville Economic Development Corporation as prepared by Jason Talley. Um, for approval by this board um, to present to the city council for their at the next city council meeting. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. I carry raise his hand first. No. Oh. And so we have an approval and a second for uh, entering into an interlocal agreement with City of Florida here regarding. City providing FEDC accounting services is provided in the handout regarding the local agreement for accounting services. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same time. 
as unanimously. Okay, we're going to go to the Christian consideration action for FD possibly pursuing the long pipe to complete an infrastructure road we're thinking about at Rockwell Gravity Park. If I can ask you to pull out what I call a soft budget, there are extra copies of this available for the rest of y'all. And you get your passport out to the passport or you get it on? Digital Excel. Oh, here, if you pass, we skip one. We skip deep. Glorian Partners. Oh. Yeah, very important. Excuse me. I can't follow the rest. You're doing great. Keep going because, uh, you know, <laughs> they won't be here if you can't write. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to direct your attention to the one that just says Andy on the front of it. And, uh, and this is just a cut and paste from the email while I do it. And it's in its entirety. I didn't eliminate, delete, modify, or anything like that. I basically just took my names off the email address. It says, Ram mentioned we had business with uh, Larry Hyber, and I've been asking him to kind of give us a breakdown of fees if he were to come in and be a consultant for us, similar to what he's doing with the entry outside. Realistically, we're not going to be looking at doing all of this at once, but we need to start getting a hand our arms around some of these costs. What we are going to be talking about in this uh, that we're talking about now is for we need to go out there and have geotech testing done on the existing roads and I'll have to know exactly what we have. Because for him to come in and start, or any other engineer, to start preparing a bid sheet, he needs to know what he has to, to specify for how they're going to build the road. Uh, now, we're not into, at this point, talking where we're going to chip seal it. We're going to be putting two layers of asphalt or 12 inches or 10 inches. But we need to know what we have. Out there, there was originally an old test that was done, and you'll see the Fergo consultant. The Fergo consultants did some compaction tests out there. And you, if, if you look at these numbers, like over here, percentage completion, that looked like a 59. And when I first time I saw that, it was it was a uh, concerning 59. It's a sheet that stayed together and had this yeah, Fergo. Realistically, if you go back, and looking at the original, those compactions and all, that is 99.9, 100, 99.8. Uh, you'll see the lowest is 97.2 on the front page and 97.5 on the back page. The minimal specification is 95. So the road is compacted, and it looked like they went to a probe depth of 6 inches. 6 inches is way inadequate for a road out there. But nevertheless, we have a beginning point of what they did. Uh, they're going to need to do more testing in out there. So what we're looking at doing is in this one is we're looking at possibly engaging varying partners to do scope of work regarding material testing for completing the road within Rancho Rondi, which is item number one, which you see has to make it six thousand dollars. This would not be and does not include the geotech firm fees and all. He would basically prepare a bid for them to go out and select it. Uh, I hate to say what that cost would be for a road, but I'm not for mirrored roads. I am for pad sites and all. But this is a kind of innocuous expense in the big scheme of what this old package is going to be. Uh, we had some developers in here that have had some compacting road experience and things like that. So we're just trying to get information so that uh, Burian Partners can go out and we can look at either rehiring Virgo or getting with a couple other companies to do it. But we got to start somewhere. The first step is getting field survey and coordination. Read about the field survey when we went out there Friday, it appeared that the on-site 
an ad built road and things like that may not be exactly where they had the survey originally designed that they did back last August or something yeah. like that. It may road may be off center or yeah. something like that. We need to find out where the, the water lines are and make sure we have plenty of bar dip. But the first step we got to do is get hire an engineer, either bury a partner or go out and get bid from others to, to do this. And that's what I'm asking you to consider tonight is allowing us to hire very partners to get to do this part of it. Uh, later on, you'll see if we go down preparation three, drainage, preparation water main to services on number four, he didn't know the water had been put in. So I know that can be dropped. Uh, there may be other things that we can come in there and minimize later on. And that total cost for him to do that road that he's estimating and this would be 40000 which includes the water. Uh, again, I ask your consideration to allow us to engage very partners so we can take the next step so we can find out what we're going to do to do to the road. More than likely, for the commercial, heavy traffic, heavy truck seats that we're going to need out there, we're going to need 12 inches of base and we're going to need 2 inches of asphalt. Uh, we can get in there cheaper, but until we get there and we get a cost estimate, I'll try to answer any questions, but that's where we're trying to do this. We got this progress moving, trying to keep it going. So the first step you're talking about is the field survey in coordination with the lab, which the lab would actually include, would be an additional expense. That's correct. Geotech. So do we even have an idea of what they even run? Well, until we know and can determine where they actually did these site tests and all, we don't know what they did, and they may be able to go back right. and tell you know where these tests were, and we could just amend and expand this. So, so it might make sense for them to use the same group. So it might. Yeah. Is it gonna, is it gonna require a survey before these people go out there, or are they gonna do the survey? It has been surveyed, but now then they need to do a field survey to see where they put the roads and all. Just like Verizon, look like one of Verizon's uh, up posts is now in our so easement where we're going to be putting the, the entrance. So this $6,000 is going to include that and, and give us a preliminary of what they think it's going to cost to finish this project. If I understand your question correct, it does include the field survey in a coordination with CMT lab or geotech plan. Mm -hmm. But it does not include any third party expenses. And so we'll they're going to go out back to that. See, <clears throat> until they do their field survey, we don't know if this road can be off. That's correct. 10 feet here, 4 feet here. That's correct. And need all kinds of construction work. And, uh, so That's correct. So that's why we're trying to find out where it is and what we got. Well, I they're going to locate. They're going to locate lines too. Your sewer. They're going to to locate water, water. water maybe. We know it's on the right hand side, going down uh, south. You know, how far? You know, so I think uh, some school the water. They have to have a diagram because they they were out there supposedly. They tell me when they were doing the line. I mean, the, there's fire hydrants. Right. All the way down. So I mean, it's they're gonna, they're not gonna be. It's gonna be pretty accurate where those are we located. Can do with the thing, so. But you're exactly right. This is a step to find out where all that is and what we have. And this is very important to see. Well, we really can't begin anything without this basic This is the first step. As we're discussing this. How you know, what kind of coordination do we need to have with Verizon and all this too? Because well, Verizon, Verizon see, uh, they need to be involved when this survey takes place, you know, uh, so that they know exactly right where they're going to you know, be trenching their line. To expand on what he was saying in his executive 
Verizon is trying to look. Right now, there is no setback. They did not retain any setback to utilities. So what they're trying to do is when uh, uh, Felt put in their utility, it had wording in there that it could be for utility and all. Verizon is specifically looking to see if that language is broad enough and specific enough that they can put their Verizon line in that Felt utility line. If they can't, the contract and all that Howard's working on is going to have to be signed by everybody, everybody to give us the room to put it in. Well, I think this is money well spent because we've always said that we want to get this done right and move on and get some pro progress. So are you making that in the form of a motion? I make a motion that we um, hire Burry Partners to provide a field survey in coordination with the CMT lab regarding the existing road section at the Boston County Business Park. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. I have a second by David Trojan. And I want to point out, this is not stacking. We have not engaged and we are not and have not committed to let Burry and Partners do the rest of this work. So I have a motion and a second to engage Burying Partners to prepare a scope of work regarding material testing to be completed on roads within the Rocco Grande Industrial Park up to an amount of approximately $6,000. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same time. Motion passed. <coughs> Brown, did you find a other yep. method of so you pass it out to the people? Okay, I'm checking them off as we go now. I'm down to E. Is that correct? Everybody yeah. down there? Okay, what we've what I've been doing, and Jason looked over these, but I'm not going to incriminate him or anything. He kind of looked over some of these numbers to see if I was in the correct realm of these testing. I needed to know what kind of funds we would be able and what kind of debt we would be able to service. Uh, handedly, uh, you can see the loan proceeds and pay off Wells Fargo. Funds for Rancho Grande is 1, 2, and 7, 8, 7. The loan fees, 2%, rolling over. So the two parameters I ran is 1.5 and half of $1 million. Uh, I appreciate the comments. Maybe consider us to finance and refinance the existing bond and all. Number one, you can't do that just on anything because you want to. And number two, that, that debt is strung out at long-term repayment. If we shorten it and collapse it in it, we do not have the funds to do that. We have inadequate funding to collapse and to pay off our existing bonds and this other fund. It's a good thought. I ran the numbers and we don't even come close. Uh, interest rates are pretty good at this time. I contacted three different companies that are familiar with this. Uh, these type loans, uh, one of them is independent banker bank, uh, one of them is the government capital who the city has used before, and the third one was Wells Fargo, who we have accounts with and loans with now. And all I did with them is just for budgeting purposes, tell me what kind of rate they would think they would use. As you can see, for seven to ten year numbers, I used three percent. Candidly, right now, with the economy it is, we could get it less than that. So, we are not proposing, I'm not proposing a loan now. I just wanted you to see this for a couple of reasons. So we have city council and different committees and citizens asking us why we're not doing more. And it just show you how tight our budget is right now. To fund this and do it, we have very little luxury left over. It, it, it is tight. The uh, second thing is, is uh, Mary Helen needed for, and when she kind of talked about a benefit package for a future economic uh, executive director. So we put in a number here so we could factor in a possible benefit package cost to us. So there's a reason we did. I want to kind of run down these packages and show you how these numbers work and flow just so you can see. If you start out with a one and a half million dollar loan at three percent, you have a seven-year column and a ten-year column in purple. 
I said, let's say our sales tax average six hundred thousand, and it's perpetrated all the way across. Across, we have a note receivable that we collect, and that is all. This does not have any income from one-time sales. You should not include non-reoccurring income, i.e., lot sales, into a budget for your income. Now, we would have that money for discretionary use for projects later on, but for budgeting purposes, you don't. Likewise, we're moving to expenses. It does not have non-reoccurring expenses. Example, it doesn't have the McCoy Myers project out there. We're going to pay it, we're going to fund it, and it's going to be done. So these are reoccurring income and expenses, which is what you should use in a budget for this purpose. So you can see the accounting, the advertising, you can see the bank charges, capital cost, uh, interest on the bonds, the maintenance of mowing, marketing promotion. Marketing promotion has a little aspect of it. Uh, section 505, 103 of the code, Texas code, says we can't spend more than 10% on that. Now, this marketing and promotion could be anything from firework to anything we own you for marketing and promotion. Uh, you come on down there, office lease, you <coughs> pay office expenses. You come down there for a total expenses, 202, subtract that from your uh, total income. I'm a banker. Okay, so that's the net income is the net, net slide. <coughs> then we have a principal on the bond payment, about 107. On the proposed loan, it'd be 240 for seven years, 175 nine for 10 years. If you take, subtract those off from your net income, you can see your cash surplus after debt service, it's only $49,000. That's it. And that's a 1.14 coverage. 1.4 coverage is 1.14 is not sufficient coverage to get a loan. And then if you had discretionary expenses, let's say we did some kind of discretionary project that we went out there and charged the McCoys or anything like that, and I just used a straight line item 100000 you can see it's a negative $50,000 doing that. It's a negative. You do it for 10 years, same number, and it comes down, we have a 1.15 coverage with the 100000 only a $14,000 coverage. Okay, that's all tied. So we move to a million dollars. And it's the same one. You can read the numbers down. You can see it's five years, it's a negative. It's seven years, it's a 1.3, and 10 years, it's a 1.73. The 1, the 1 million for seven years and 10 years it's doable. It has the coverage that we need to make it done, and we have a little bit of discretion there. If we had some of these lot sales or things, that fund could be put back into it, but I would hope this committee and the next one, when they do projects, that they would have maybe something that's reinvestable. In other words, when they do do a project, the people have to pay it back to help them get in there, but there's a, uh, some kind of program so they have to replenish it, so to speak. So that's where these numbers come from. Now then, what is the total cost of what we're looking at? I found in some old numbers and all, you'll see these two maps here. One of them is that water is in the blue and the streets is in the red. The water is in pretty much. The electricity is in pretty much. The reason I'm telling you is pretty much is because when we was out there Friday, it does not appear that the electric line and the water line extend all the way down the road. So some of these lots that we have under contract could have the requirement we put in extensions under the water and electricity. I'm telling you right now. So we're going to put the water aside and if what is in there, we had some, but we're not going to address that now. On the street one, if you look at it, what he's saying here is the street, the 30-foot pavement, the plus or minus $150 a square foot, that's his ballpark. He's saying the driveway is going to cost you $70,000. You see your $70,000? And then the first entrance down to this intersection is 850 linear feet, or approximately $120,000. 
Here is the extension that goes to the elbow to the right. That is about 1,570 feet, about $235,500 estimate. These numbers are adding up quick. That road is going to have to be extended all the way to the end based on that last lot where they had this thing. So we know that has to go all the way. From the intersection all the way further south, <clears throat> that is probably 1,660 square feet, <coughs> estimate of $249,000. Coming back, and we don't know exactly, this lot is sold to Hammer, and we may be able to shorten it a little bit. This is called the frack gag, we may be able to shorten it a little bit, but we don't know those yet. We have to ask. <coughs> this one coming down to the southwest. It's approximately 1100, uh, let's see, approximately 1520 for 228000 <coughs> If you add those numbers up right quick, and I didn't, you see, 120, 235, 249, 249,000, and 228,000. That's $829,000 just on the road. And that doesn't include the $70,000 that we're getting the bid on the front. And that's where not for any retention bonds either. The interest, uh, estimate we have on the interest, the retention pond is six hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. That's why I don't see how the first lot was ever sold before anything was completed because you didn't have a base on how to price your property. The total of those between the six hundred and ninety-five and this. And we're looking at about one six one seven. So we're going to have to have tax and sales to some of this to be able to get it down to a million dollars. Uh, you know, I'm not. I wasn't asking for when I put this on there for us to to go ahead and approve doing the loan. I think that uh, maybe if we want to do. If we want to get a pre-approved for a certain loan amount, we had three companies that we're going to need uh, last two years audited financial statements. They're going to want uh, maybe a budget that we're going to start working on probably next month. Mm -hmm. And the third thing they're going to want is they're going to want a history of our sales type. Uh, it's fairly easy as opposed to an individual just to see what we could get approved for. The step we need to do to get this approved is to get naturally at some point when we feel comfortable we approve, but we still have to take it and get the city to bless us to, and approve us getting it along. But that's, that's where we are. I don't know if y'all want to even uh, just to see if we would be able to qualify for a loan of a certain amount, not committing to it, but just to, to do that. Mm. Well, I've always felt that it's just the right thing to do as far as uh, getting the property up to the level of satisfaction that the people that bought businesses would be satisfied. And I think there's a good opportunity, a real good opportunity, to even attract others uh, once completion is made. Uh, so I would be for at least entertaining the idea of seeing what we would qualify for. That way we know we're not just projecting a number here. We know that somebody has come back and said this is workable at this level. That'd be kind of a worst case. And then go from there. And we might have other sales even before that happens to offset some of that. I will also remind you that some of the contracts on property that have closed out there, Rancho Grande, they had stipulations in there that though they would have the roads installed within 60 or 90 days. And they had been that long past. So so if y'all would just maybe give me uh, and Jason approval just to maybe meet with a couple of these companies or provide them 
financial, again, we're not asking, we're just kind of just keeping all informed and the citizens and, the, and all what's going on, we might go ahead and pursue that. And if it's the other thing, we, we're going to have to figure and come to determination is what's a safe amount of money we want to maintain in a fund or uh, an account uh, as our rainy day fund and you know that's something else we have to right now the account's grown because we really try to keep spending to minimum but how much is is a safe level because there will be times where we have an opportunity we want to jump on it and we need to have some reserves to do it but what is that? Is it a year? Is it six months? I don't know. You know, we have to really kind of come up with something there. Because, um, you know, you didn't take into consideration <coughs> the other monies we have currently, you know, that could be used to offset, but how much are you willing to use that? And so there's another question we need to think about. Do we ever get any money from the oil lease? Or? Uh, no, we have not yet. They, they have not accepted our lease. Oh, they have? I thought they had. No, sir. Just to negotiate. Okay. So, and some of that would be, have to pay down some of this if it did come into this. Again, this is just a discussion, throwing some numbers out there so people could actually, for, to see some numbers. <coughs> there is no further discussion. Again, we're going to, it's not a consideration in action. Uh, but we're just uh, bringing up, and we'll maybe just gather a little bit more additional information. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to move on to item F, discussion and consideration of a benefit package for executive director position in Miss May Helen It really wasn't a, we didn't bring it up for a vote or anything, so we don't need a table or anything. Okay, um, under discussion for the benefit package for the executive director's position, we had informally uh, kicked around the idea that perhaps the same types of benefits that are offered to city employees would be for this person's position. And I would like to pursue that. Um, I don't know how we go about that if we... Part of the thing that Jason and I worked at with this other, since they're going to be doing our finances and, and all with the interlock agreement, mm -hmm. that is the first step that we work through. So if we would be able to offer them a standard package. We would have to expand that for an interlocal, but they are agreeable <coughs> per law to consider that. Um, and you're talking about insurance, retirement, etc. Right. Right. So basically that's that's what I was referring to. Those numbers that we had in that soft budget, the number that you're looking for the total package of more than half of the total package, yes. So if we move forward then, are you going to need a motion that we uh, move forward for the meeting on Friday week then with the total package that we're going to be offering? Would it be total inclusive of the 85000 Or what are you thinking? Um, Well, since I don't know what the benefit packages are for the city, it's kind of hard for me to state that. But I would, I would think that this position at eighty-five thousand inclusive should be more than adequate to meet those those considerations. I would think. Well, what you're going to you about have issue. is about five thousand on health benefits, and then I don't know what the contribution is to the municipal retirement yeah. programs. Does anybody know what the contribution is? Okay, it's probably going to be in the range of five to six percent of the gross pay, I would think. So, you know, if you have a gross pay of um, seventy, you know, you're probably in that range, um, forty-two hundred a year, something like that, and that would be, you know, contributing.
contributed to that particular fund that uh, it's, a, it's not a defined contribution plan, it's a defined benefit plan that simply it, years of service, etc. cetera, uh, they have a certain uh, payout uh, over time. But that's really the only uh, items there that I would, you know, that's the most common. Uh, you know, having a one-man operation, it's very hard for us to implement anything else unless we provide it. Yeah. Um, I truly believe that that 85 is more than adequate. I would not want to lower it at this point because we, we've got some candidates who are very, very, very qualified. We don't think if they, if they were chosen, I don't know. I'd hate to. So you want to table this? I don't think reasonable to table it until okay. I, until we have some more definitive numbers if we could get that from the city from from Andy yeah. so you make that in form of a motion to table that to gather the for definitive information that would be yes I would like to make a motion to table this discussion uh, for consideration and action on the benefit package until we can uh, get more information from We have a motion in a second uh, from David Strozier to table discussing consideration benefit package for executive director position. Uh, so the next meeting that needs to be open and come up. Uh, do you have any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Discussion and consideration adoption of investment policy for FBDC. Uh, Mr. Talley. And I believe this is, you should have a... Yes, and this was actually passed out at the previous meeting. Um, this was brought to our attention by Laura, who had recently, uh, through Mr. Rosenberg's work in the city council, had approved their own investment policy. And this is a requirement through the Public Investment Act. Um, and I may not have said that correctly. It might be Public Investment Fund Act. But, uh, and it includes uh, political subdivisions, uh, entities that have um, authority underneath or part of the city. So we definitely fit the mold there. And all this does is uh, outline the scope of the type of funds that we can have, of which the current funds that we do have meet the requirements. It talks about what funds are not qualified for us to have. And of course, um, the whole goal is to protect principle and, and also have liquidity uh, in this, this, this approach to funds that we have with um, this entity. Uh, so once again, without reinventing the wheel, simply plug in some numbers. Um, the only question I do have is that you look at uh, page one, section D, uh, delegation of authority. Uh, well, you could probably put a number of folks there uh, you might want to expand that to include signature authority uh, on the, the books. Uh, we, I just, uh, not knowing what the right answer might be, because I wanted the group to, to provide feedback, we have the treasurer, executive director, and you can put slash interim executive director. And Andy, did you have some other comments on that section as well? Uh, I think it's very read it. I think that's very good. I think that should be the first two, and then in our case, have the interim. One thing I, you, I would suggest here is in the absence of either one of them, mm -hmm. that then the uh, president and or the vice president be able to act in their behalf if something happens to one of you gentlemen, and we can continue to operate until we nominate the collector so okay. we fill up the position. But that's not one. Yeah, well, that needs to be added. In absence of either one president or vice president, could act. Well, what, I don't mean to, to nitpick, but what constitutes an absence? Because if the wrong people are making the wrong decision, okay, and you're not going to be here at this meeting, but since you're absent. I think uh, if you want to define that, if they are no longer uh, able to perform through either resignation, sickness, illness, okay. 
or if they simply refuse that. Okay. Uh, I would be more comfortable with something like that. That's the standard language yeah. that we use. Okay, the next page uh, at the top, uh, one of the requirements, of course, will be bonding with all staff, which is, is a good thing anyway. Uh, so anyone that has any signature authority with the uh, banking uh, would be required to, to have a bond. Uh, bonding is not very expensive, really, uh, to do that. Um, you know, it just really outlines the principles, um, the objectives, standard of care, uh, that addresses, uh, you know, what a prudent person would do if it was really your own money, you know, in trying to, to uh, maintain uh, safety. Uh, now, the other thing it does do, uh, look at G, investment strategy. There has to be a little strategy written for each investment that we have or account. Um, so simply, <laughs> this outlines more duties that have to be followed and adhered to, okay? That's uh, also good and bad all at the same time. But I think overall it would be, of course, uh, good because um, it, it definitely points out what's unacceptable investments. Okay, what is the FEDC council? Uh, that's a mis that's a typo. Mm -hmm. Council needs to be struck. That was a talking page three. The FEDC council. Well, that was part. Of, that was city council. So uh, this would be FEDC. see any of that, and we can run a word search anyway to search for those words. Uh, the other thing it talks about on page um, six, primary depository shall be selected for the banking service procurement process, which will include a formal request for application no less than every five years. So when's the last time we've looked at other banking institutions for service? <coughs> I don't know. It says every five years, as the law says, plus having a you know depository agreement with that bank. 